Do you know who invented chili? How old it is, what its origin is, where it came from? I personally do not. So today I'm gonna do a little research into the history of chili and share with you three different origin stories that I've found that I thought were really interesting. So while I'm sharing with you the history, I'm gonna try and make a recipe that I found from one of my favorite chefs for his turkey chili, and we'll see how it turns out at the end of the episode. If you haven't already, before we jump in, please like and subscribe, and uh, let's get cooking and see what we can learn about chili today. So the recipe I'm gonna use is from Emeril. He is one of my favorite TV chefs growing up. I think everyone can remember the infamous Bam Bam Bam. Now he really got me into cooking, so I wanna use his recipe. I have also found a bunch of other different famous chefs recipes, which I'll link down below. I thought they were all great, but I decided to use Emeril's because one, I can make it with turkey and swap out ground beef. It is that time of year where everyone's got their fitness goals. So I'm trying to make a little bit of a lean alternative of the classic chili dish. I've found that you can make the dish Dish, really using any protein that you want. Some that I've linked below have like shredded white meat chicken chilies. There are chilies that have traditional ground beef in them. Really, it's pretty versatile. So whatever works for you. Either this recipe or some famous chefs that I found sort of in my research, you'll find one of them beneficial. You can try making a version of this at home uh, while it's chilly outside. So the first part of this recipe calls for dicing a bunch of vegetables. So let me start with that. And I think that's also a great opportunity for me to share with you the first origin story of chili that I came across in my research. So this story, I like to call it the Canary Island Auntie. It involves an unnamed Canary Island woman who is said she migrated to San Antonio, Texas in the 1700s. And she combined the local ingredients she found there, chili peppers, tomatoes, onions, and beef, created a sort of stew. This dish didn't actually become popularized until about a hundred years later in the 1800s by the chili queens of San Antonio. And part of the reason I love of this story is because it kind of reminds me of my grandma a little bit, or really anybody's grandma for that matter. It's sort of completely plausible, right? You can see this figure in the kitchen sort of experimenting with different things and stumbling upon the perfect mix of tomatoes and chilies and beef and the amount of time and temperature you need to cook it down to to get all the textures right. But it is the most vague of all the chili origin stories. It doesn't have all the details, right? The woman is unnamed. We do know that it happened in the 1700s, but that's about all the detail that we have. And I want to start with this one because that's the stage nicely, right? More detailed and more, or more historically, I guess, accurate or specific origin stories that I found that I'll share with you later. Finish chopping up all of our veggies and we've gone through this first story. The second part of this recipe from Emerald calls for us to effectively start heating a pot cooking, you know, adding olive oil and doing that stuff. While I do this cooking portion, figure it's a good time to jump into our second origin story. It attributes the first chili recipe to a Spanish nun named Sister Mary, and she never left a convent, but her spirit is said to have been visited by a Humano, a native people who lived in West Texas in the 1600s. And she reportedly received this recipe for a stew with chili peppers, tomatoes, and onions, and wrote it down in a letter. That is pretty awesome, if I say so myself. Talk about fantastical. Of all the three stories, it's probably the least likely, if I had to guess. Uh, I'm not a historian, right? I just do research and pick out interesting things that I like to share with you guys and combine that with the food that I love to cook. Let's jump back into the recipe. So let me add the chicken stock, the tomatoes, the tomato paste, bring it to a boil, and then I'll reduce it down and let it simmer for about 30 to 45 minutes. While that cooking process is happening nice and slowly, we can jump into the last origin story that I found about chili, it's that it was invented by the Texas Rangers a group of lawmen who were known for their spicy food preferences and spicy lifestyles. They cooked chili on the cattle trail during the gold rush and they used dried beef and dried chili peppers and salt and they pounded it all together and they sort of boiled it in water. Rustic and a lot simpler than what we think of modern chili is today. It's the least exciting of all three of the stories, but it's definitely plausible. I can completely see how a bunch of Texas Rangers would make this right while they're on the trail. And those are our three different origin stories. Our on from the Canary Islands, we have our nun, and we have the Texas Rangers. So let me know down in the comments, which of these three do you think should be given the credit for being one of the creators? And now mind you, I came across a bunch of different stories when I did my research. There are a ton out there. 
I chose these three because they're my favorite. But if there are others that you've heard or maybe others that you think are better, like feel free to leave them in the comments and share them with everyone because, you know, we're all here to learn a little bit and we all like food. So, you know, the more we can know, the better. Let's see how this bowl that we put together of Emerald's chili tastes. I'm curious to see it's turkey instead of beef, if it still has that level of like richness and hardiness. Let's give this a try and see how this chili turned out. Cheers. Emerald did a great job with this. Even though it's turkey, all the richness is still there and all the flavor is still there. It's just not as heavy, I guess. I think the cheese and the, you know, green onion is sort of nice, adds a bit more heft to it. The green onion kind of cuts through. Can really taste the cumin. The different chili, the jalapeno and the bell peppers do come through. And the chicken stock definitely adds sort of a depth of flavor. I mean, in my opinion, I would tell you to at least try making this. Is it as epic as like traditional beef chili? No, but I'm incredibly satisfied. And honestly, I don't miss the beans at all. But if you want them, add them in, go for it. Alrighty, that is it for today's History Bite. Let me know in the comments below which origin story for the history of chili you like the best. And if you have any other recipes or types of food you want me to look into from a historical perspective, please let me know. Till next time, keep cooking, my friends.